Um, I don't even know how much, but it's happy. <laughs> um, you know, Bitcoin in particular and Ether, um, net ETH to a, a smaller extent, Bitcoin is just driven by supply and demand. There's only going to be 21 million of them. The more people that buy and the fewer people that sell, that means the price is going to go up. That's just the nature of it. it it's a great store of value. That's why I have an investment in it, you know, because I do feel that the demand is going to um, exceed the number of people selling. ETH, we'll see what happens with the ETF and whether or not that gets approved. But because of the way it works, it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more driven by utility, but there's more and more applications coming for the utility. The biggest disappointment of crypto so far has been there's not that one application where you go to your grandma and she says, I got to get this new crypto app because all my friends are using it. Kind of like we saw in the early days of apps with Instagram. We need that transitional application for crypto to be ubiquitous. But until then, just from an investment perspective, I'm investing in Bitcoin over gold all day, every day, and I've said that for years. Shark Tank star Mark Cuban is extremely bullish on Bitcoin and crypto and would pick Bitcoin as an investment over gold every day of the week. Mark Cuban has become one of the most forthright figures in the crypto space, becoming a huge bull on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a number of other projects. In his two most recent interviews with CNBC and Forbes, Cuban explains why he is still extremely bullish on the entire sector and also why investors are still extremely early with the majority of the huge opportunities in crypto still to come. Cuban speaks on why he's keeping his eyes on the applications that are going to be built upon blockchain technology and why he thinks the big winners will be those that play to the strengths of smart contracts. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Cuban explains why an investor is never too late or too old to make the most of the opportunities around them. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now, here's Mark Cuban with why he's so bullish on crypto. Any new technology, I don't care what it is, and I've been involved with a lot of new technologies, disruptive technologies. I could take you back to the early days of streaming when we were the very first commercial streamer streaming company and right off the bat it was hard to use you know if you think back to 1995 and you wanted to stream just audio you had to have a subscription with an internet service provider then to make that work you had to download a client which had a TCP IP client then you had to download a streaming audio client you know and you had to have a, the right kind of modem there were all these pieces that had to fit together it was complicated and so the uptake was big for sports fans and you know big news junkies and everybody else were like dude you're an idiot I'll just turn on my TV you know I'll just turn on the radio what the hell do I have to go through all that hassle to just listen to a sporting event we reached that initial stage and then all of a sudden it got a little bit boring right because you had to wait for the the new applications to come along you know we had to wait for live to come along we had to wait for video to come along we started you know streaming audio in 1995 when we did video, it was 1998, you know, and even then it was only postage stamp size. And it was only, you know, in 2012, let's say 2013, 14, 20, almost 20 years later, where people looked at streaming like, okay, it's normal, right? You just click on Netflix and it just streams and you don't have to do anything else. Well, with crypto, it's very analogous to that. We're in the early hassle phases. Now, the very earliest of crypto, you know, however you want to decide the beginning with Bitcoin or whatever has been around 12 years. But in terms of applications with smart contracts, that's only 2017 for the most part. And so we're really only five years in. So I'm still really bullish on crypto. We had some early wins, just like, you know, streaming audio with sports and news. Um, now, you know, with, with crypto, you have DeFi and you have money transfer and some other applications, but you haven't had any mainstream applications where your mom says, okay, we've got to get a wallet because I have to do A, B, or C, right? It's been DeFi, NFTs, and money transfer. And so it's kind of boring right now. We're waiting for that next round of applications and there's a lot of people working on them. You know, NFTs for the, the resale of books. So we take NFTs past the collectible markets to the utility markets. NFTs for refi, which is for um, carbon, carbon offsets, buying and selling and, and trading carbon offsets and even burning them so that they're not resold all the time but they have a direct impact on, on, um, on the environment. And there'll be more and more and more of those applications that bring in, that are more mainstream. But they're not all the way here. They're not truly mainstream yet. And so we're going through that lull. And you saw the same thing with the internet too, right? Until mobile phones came along, 
from 1995 to 2007 with the iPhone, meh, right? I mean, you had Amazon, you had, you know, you could go shopping and you could stream, but it wasn't like it was just earth shattering. But once we got it on mobile, then we got the app store in what, 2009? And then even remember there, the first apps on the app store were like, here, look, let me hold my phone like this. And it looks like <laughs> I'm drinking a beer, <laughs> right? Yeah, it looks like I'm drinking a beer. Just dumb shit. There's no reason why crypto is going to be any different. But the good news is, you know, the investments I'm looking to make are geared towards applications that will be mainstream and not about, okay, let's create an Instagram for crypto. Let's create a Twitter, not me too type applications. More like, okay, things that take advantage of smart contracts and distributed environments. NFTs is books, I think particularly for textbooks. Now, whether or not we can get the, um, the college textbook publishers to go along is another issue. But, you know, the idea of kids buying books for classes day, my daughter just went to Vanderbilt. So the whole process of buying books, you know, first, do you want to buy new or used? Right. Then you lug these books back. And then at the end of the semester, because they're only good for the time you were in the class, you make the decision, you know, yeah, I'm going to sell it. How do I sell it? Do I ship it off? Do I take it to the bookstore? It's just a pain in the ass. And in a digital world, it's ridiculous. And, you know, with those as NFTs, well, the NFTs allow you to apply royalties that when that book is resold, the author and the publisher and whoever else is involved can get a set royalty fee. So that means that you know, the publishers and people who created the book can keep on getting paid, whereas when there's a physical book that gets sold and resold, they have to hope that book falls apart you know, and so that they can sell a new one. And so I think that's a great application as I talk about environmental impact with trading of carbon offsets. I think insurance, being able to very easily buy insurance. But I think the, in terms of the home run type applications um, and more complicated, longer to develop type things, you know, I think things like health insurance, right? The whole process of getting a claim pre-approved or approved after the fact is horrible. Nobody likes dealing with their insurance company, their health insurance company. First of all, for pre-approvals, you never know why you're going, whether or not you'll get pre-approved or not. And when you go, it's not like the UK where you just go to the NHS and you just hope they have it, not if you'll get approved. You know, here it's like, all right, I have this need, the doctor's prescribing it for me, but I can't afford to pay it out of pocket. And so what am I gonna do if my insurance company doesn't approve it? Well, with crypto, um, you could reinvent how insurance claims are pre-approved or approved by creating um, an environment where you have a thousand validators, there's um, different types of roll-ups, you know, optimistic roll-up where you have validators and challengers, right? So you could train people to be a validator and pay them every time they validate, um, approve or don't approve a um, claim. The optimistic roll-up side of it, the challengers will say, okay, I, you know, you didn't approve this, but not for the right reason. And your training says you should have approved it. I'm challenging it. So anything that you're staking that you put up to get paid for that, I get, and that, that keeps it honest. That's just a crypto way of keeping things honest. And so that type of application has scale, it has impact, and it's better in a decentralized, you know, wide and flat organization than vertically integrated company like our traditional companies. And I know that's deep in the weeds, you know, but that's the reality, right? You've got, you know, any tech advancement, you've got to start, you know, Steve Jobs had this great saying, he said, everything's a remix. And you have to look at new technologies and look at things the way they're being done and say, okay, how can I remix these together? You know, how can I do a mashup in music terms, right? And um, if you can mash this stuff up and, and have it make sense and make it easier for and better for people to use, that's a big win. My dad did upholstery on cars and worked six days a week, getting up early, coming home late, lost an eye. Um, Physically, it was just beat the hell up. Um, crawling in cars, pulling out seats, you know, cutting the tops off to turn them into convertibles. It was just, you know, he busted his ass to, to do what he could for us. And, but he always smiled and he was always great. And he just gave me the attitude that, you know, work is work, but you know, you only have one life. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me that you know, one of the questions people always ask me is, what would you tell your younger self? And they allude to the fact that, you know, what would you tell your 16 or 17 or 18 year old self? And really that's 
that's not the self I would want to talk to. You know, what my dad taught me was, you know, talk to your 40-year-old self, your 50-year-old self, because we hit 40 and we think we're old. We hit 50 and you, you're going to think you're old. You're not. You know, he was, he was adamant about the fact that today's the youngest you're going to be and you got to live young and be young and act young and feel young. The young 40-year-old, the young 50-year-old, that, that's who needs to hear it. And, and I learned that from my dad. And, that was the most impactful thing. And then my wife and my kids, um, they don't listen to me, but <laughs> I've learned to listen to them and realize that it's, it's their world. You know, it's not. And what I do today um, that can make their future better and brighter is important. And that the, the game is different, you know, whether it's climate change, whether it's healthcare, you know, my generation is an embarrassment. Seriously, um, when I was, you know, 16, 17, 18, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and I thought we were going to, you know, Abby Hoffman was taking over college campuses, or you know, storming um, buildings and and taking over the president of the college's offices, and we were going to be the revolutionaries that changed the world. We turned into the people who watch, you know. TV news all the time and, and make all our decisions from watching, watching newscasts. That's, that's an embarrassment. I want to avoid that and try to fight that off <laughs> and, and try to do, learn as much as I can from my kids. And, you know, I'll give you one quick example. Um, I, you know, I love to read and I try to get my, my son, in particular my, my middle daughter, to read and they're like, nah. We get it from video. And early on, I was adamant that one day my son, and my daughter has examples too, but my son started asking me Shark Tank questions. And he was asking me, why don't I do royalty deals? And I started explaining, well, you know, it, it eats up cash flow and it reduces gross margin. I'm like, do you know what gross margin is? And he was like, yeah, it's the difference between your sales price and your cost of goods sold. I'm like, well, how did you, he was like 10 years old, nine, 10 years old. I'm like, how did you learn that? TikTok. <laughs> and it made me realize that they weren't the one with the problem. I was the one holding on to the things the way I did it, thinking that was the only way to do it. And I think that's what my kids are teaching me, that a lot of the things that you know, my generation might look down on for my kids, they got it right and we got it wrong. So there's Mark Cuban, Shark Tank star, and now extreme bull in the crypto world. It's clear that his bullish stance on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the broader crypto market isn't just about the potential for financial gains. Cuban's deep dive into the transformative potential of blockchain technology and smart contracts highlights a future where the applications built on these platforms could revolutionize how we interact with the digital world. Mark Cuban has illuminated the path for investors, showcasing that being early in the crypto space still holds immense potential despite the rapid growth we've witnessed so far. His emphasis on the foundational changes blockchain technology will bring to various sectors underscores the importance of understanding the technology behind the tokens. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.